Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, Guardian Cold Spring Harbor. For those of you who are new to my channel, I'm in Long Island, New York, Zone 7A. Right now, we are in the month of September 2023. Summer is almost over and fall season is just a few short weeks away. In today's video, I wanted to give you guys a full tour of my vegetable garden here in Long Island, New York, Zone 7. Hey, it's been a very interesting time in my vegetable garden as we are transitioning from our spring summer crops to our fall vegetable garden crops. And you know what? This September 2023 has been a very interesting one as we've been having very hot and humid temperatures for the last few weeks. Abnormally hot, if I may say. The last week we had mid 90 temperatures and very hot humidity here. This morning, slight rain passed us over here. And as you could see, it cooled down just a little bit and it's been breezy this morning, finally. By this time last year, majority of my summer crops have been uh, taken out of my raised garden beds and replaced with fall garden crops over this year a lot of my crops are still doing great take a look at this monster over here guys it has taken over pretty much my entire grass area over here this monster is huge my my um some of my tomatoes are still going my eggplants are still going strong even my peppers so come with me guys as I will show you exactly what is going on in my vegetable garden now in the month of September 2023. As I'll give you this full tour of my backyard vegetable garden, you guys will for sure see how different my vegetable garden is looking now in the month of September versus how it looked back guys in the summer when i gave you a tour of my backyard raised bed garden you will see how many vegetables are no longer in bloom and in full swing you will see exactly what crops i have already replaced with fall garden crops and what is still going strong now as we are approaching fall 2023 Let's start on this side, right next to my kitchen door. I have my mint and some of my tomatoes. You could see the red tomato right over there, which needs to be picked. So this garden bed is actually still going strong. You could see there's still baby tomatoes. There are still quite a few blooms. The leaves are nice and green, so there's no fungal disease happening here. More tomatoes, you could see over here. So this batch is actually still going strong, even now in the month of September. Take a look over here. This is one of my containers. So I potted this myself with proven winners, super tunias in the late spring. And I just wanted to show you that it's still going absolutely strong. Look at the nice big blooms. Beautiful. Right next to the container is my magnolia tree. Take a look at these huge, huge fragrant blooms. More closed buds that are getting ready to open up. Look at this stunner. This one is just opening up today. Filled with huge, huge blooms my potted rose trees are doing stunning as well guys and they are filled filled with an abundant amount of blooms i have two of these trees over here in my backyard each one i mean this year i haven't seen anything like this guys huge beautiful rose blooms and take a look the trees filled with blooms from top to bottom. In this raised bed, I have my parsley over here. You could see the majority of the leaves are still nice and green. And I do have quite a lot of parsley because my family would just love adding parsley to all of our meals. 
Next to it is just one of my green zucchini squash plants. So this is not powdery mildew, guys. This is the variety of uh, zucchini that has these beautiful white pigmentation on the leaves. And as you could see, there are still very nice blooms on it. And in fact, I have been harvesting zucchini from this plant roughly every two to three days. So this plant is still going strong. It's nice and large. Right next to that raised bed are my blueberry bushes, my gooseberry bush, and my currants. Remember guys, I have the black currant and the red currant. So all of the berries, including the blueberries, are done for the season. We have harvested all of the berries. You could see some leftover branches over here. So the blueberries are done. And in fact, you could see that these shrubs have started to change color, the pigmentation of the leaves which is exactly what happens as the fall approaches. You can see the change in the color of the leaves, including the blueberries. You could see this burgundy pigmentation on the leaves. This is what happens to the blueberry bushes and gooseberries once we're starting to get closer and closer to the fall season. Over here in this container, I do have my uh, baby patio eggplants. You could still see that there are some small eggplants growing on it. There are larger eggplants over here. And I did just harvest two fully matured eggplants from this plant yesterday. However, I am not seeing any more blooms on this. I am seeing some eggplants forming, but no blooms anymore. Right next to the eggplant is my container, yet another container that I potted myself at the end of spring. And look at this, the flowers are touching the ground. This container was not looking like this, guys, when I potted it. In fact, my husband asked me why I put so little plants in this container. And I told him not to worry that these plants are mounting plants, climbing plants, and they will eventually grow and take over the entire container. And look at this, guys. Was I right or was I right? So this container is still going strong. I don't see any dead flowers. I don't see any spent flowers. Nice green foliage. Oh, this container is quite a stunner. And all three of these flowers are by proven winners, guys. And I picked up these plants at my local Home Depot towards the end of the spring season. And then I potted this container all by myself. Moving on, guys, right next to my currants, which are, of course, are done for the season, for the year, in fact, is my first raised garden bed. And take a look what I have growing in this one. So here I have a Japanese eggplant, which is not only still in full bloom, you could see beautiful purple flowers. There are some baby Japanese eggplants growing on it here. And then there are some fully mature. Let me just show you the size of this eggplant. Again, guys, we just had some rain pass. So it is quite wet, but look at the size of this eggplant. They're huge. As I'm moving some leaves away, some foliage away, look guys, another ginormous, look at the size of this thing, Japanese eggplant. So this plant is still in full, full growth. Behind it, I have some of my peppers, just some guys. Take a look at this, still flowers, closed buds, open flowers. Lots of peppers, little peppers, more mature peppers growing. So the peppers are still in full swing. Look at all these new flowering buds on them. On this side of the Japanese eggplant, I have yet another pepper. Look at this, guys. Still in full, full swing. You could see little peppers, larger peppers, and there are still flower blooms on this pepper as well. 
So here is yet another pepper variety. Look at this, blooms. And I just wanted to show you the shape of this pepper. I think it looks so interesting. Take a look at this one. Look at this. Look at the shape of these peppers. You could see smaller peppers. Well, here, in fact, this just came right off. Look at this. Beautiful, but you could see the buds, the smaller peppers growing. So this plant is also still very, very happy. I have more plants behind this. I have yet another pepper that is doing amazing. Another Japanese eggplant. Take a look at this, guys. Little eggplants all over it, guys. So the eggplants and the peppers are still in full bloom here in Long Island, New York, zone 7A. But right over here, behind my Japanese eggplants and the peppers is my raised garden bed that is filled with cherry tomatoes. You could see that there are still plenty of ripe tomatoes to pick. However, you can also see that the leaves are starting to turn yellow brown. You can clearly see that this plant, so the tomatoes are starting to die out. There are not many blooms left, only very few. So it looks like this bed will have to be emptied out relatively soon and replaced with fall garden veggies. Right next to this tomato bed, I have yet another bed where I am growing peppers. You can see beautiful jalapeno peppers over here on this plant. Uh, still tons of blooms. You could see over here, lots of baby peppers. Lots of blooms, guys. Nice green foliage. And then right next to it is this huge, huge chili pepper plant covered in green chilies and ripe red chilies, guys. Tons and tons of new blooms. Take a look. The top of the plant is filled to capacity with new blooms, guys. And the pepper plant is so filled with peppers. It is almost mounting down. Take a look. Some are smaller, some are larger, filled, filled with chili peppers. As I was showing you my huge, huge chili pepper plant, I was also able to harvest yet another batch of jalapeno and chili peppers. You guys can clearly see the difference uh, in coloring. So I only pick these uh, two pepper varieties when they are at their peak heat and how I, do I know that they're at their peak heat is when they change color from green so regardless of the sizing I never pick jalapenos or chili peppers when they're still green color I always wait till they turn color to this deep deep uh, red almost burgundy pigmentation that is when I know that my peppers are their peak heat and ready to be picked in this raised garden bed, I used to have my tomato plants, my heirlooms. As you could see, there are not too many tomatoes left. There are only two plants left over here with the supports because they're absolutely huge. Look at this. They basically collapsed into my beet bed. But you could still see that they're filled with large tomatoes over here too. So I am letting these tomatoes grow a bit and uh, ripen. So I haven't pulled out these two tomato plants because again, we've been having very, very hot weather this past week. So I'm trying to give this, these two plants a chance to maybe grow and to ripen in the sun. However, the remainder of the tomatoes that were here, I picked the tomatoes and of course, discarded of the tomato plants. Amended the soil once again and planted a um, fall variety of zucchini, guys. So this variety is more cold tolerant. So basically, these zucchinis are a part of my fall vegetable garden. 
And again, I space them out because they are um, going to grow. And I wanted to make sure that I give them plenty of space. And right in front of them, I have okra, guys. So I have four okra plants over here. So one, two, three, and four. The okra is doing beautifully. Look at this. It's loving the weather so far. The leaves are getting nice and big. And let's see, guys. Let's see what's going to happen. I'm trying to give these four beauties a chance. Before me, we move on to the next raised garden bed, I just wanted to show you how many tomatoes I was able to pick from those four tomato plants that were just done for the season that I discarded off and replaced with that late season squash and okra plants. Over here in this container are all the tomatoes that I picked from those four plants. They were just done for the season. You could see they're all heirlooms. Some are larger, some are smaller, some are clearly more uh, ripe than others. But again, guys, the plant was done for the season and I didn't want to risk, you know, raccoons, uh, rabbits, or even birds eating my tomato fruits. So I did pick them, place them in this container, and I'm letting them ripen off the vine. And remember, guys, tomatoes do not need sunlight to ripen. They ripen themselves through something called ethylene gas so they naturally release ethylene gas which helps them ripen and the more tomatoes you place next to each other the more ethylene gas will be released and the quicker your tomatoes will ripen but i do have quite a lot of tomatoes maybe i should look up a good uh, can uh, tomato recipe maybe some diced tomatoes maybe some salsa i'll have to look into this because this is quite a lot of these huge tomatoes and i don't think we're going to be able to eat all of these before they're going to start to rot moving on guys so right above this bed where you saw the uh, late season squash and the okra i have yet another smaller raised garden bed so this bed was filled with three rows of carrots and as you guys may recall from a previous video that i've made uh, me and my children have harvested our carrots and i replaced the carrots with these beautiful beans so there are different varieties of the purple bean the gray bean and you could see how nicely they're growing they're trellising look at this they're wrapping around the supports and i'm starting to get beautiful blooms guys and yes i started these from seed inside indoors and then i transplanted these into the raised bed i want to say roughly a week ago and these are also a part of my fall vegetable garden collection guys over here next to the beans i do have a same garden bed and this one is filled with tiny little seedlings. Yeah, they're still babies, guys. They're not even true leaves yet formed. But these are three rows of kale. You could see over here, I had my summer beans, green beans to be exact, uh, bush beans, green bush beans growing in this raised bed. The beans have been long harvested and you know consumed. But I did replace, I did amend this uh, soil once again and replaced it with kale, which is an excellent, excellent vegetable to grow in your fall vegetable gardens. It is very, very uh, cold weather tolerant. And in fact, kale can even tolerate light frost and light snow. Right below the kale, I have a four by four raised garden bed. You could see I have some peppers growing over here in the front. The plant is doing great. I'm just letting these peppers reach their full sizing. Again, plenty of new blooms on the pepper plants. Right behind it, I have some of my cherry tomatoes. Look at this guys, packed with cherry tomatoes as well as still new blooms. And you know what guys, I don't know what's going on, but this year, I feel like my heirloom tomatoes 
gave up much quicker than my cherry tomatoes. Look, these guys are still going at it. Look, vines filled, filled with beautiful tomatoes. Some are larger, some are smaller. Let me show you some ripe ones over here on this side. You could see the yellow tomatoes. Guys, I pick these and eat them right off the bush as I'm gardening. My kids love coming up to this plant, picking some fresh tomatoes right off the vine and eating them. They're so sweet. They almost taste like candy. It's, it's just amazing. I cannot believe how well my cherry tomato varieties are doing this year. And they're still going strong. And look at all the new blooms. And the pollinators are so happy. On this side of that same bed, I do have one heirloom tomato plant. But you could see that the leaves, the foliage is not the same green color as the cherry tomatoes. And there are still some tomatoes left on this plant. So I did leave it alone. However, it looks like this plant might be one of the next ones to go for the season because you could see that with all this heat, with all this humidity, I do have some fungal diseases going on over here. I will try to cure them, treat them. However, it's getting just too late in the season and these tomatoes are just, I think they're just done, done and done. So I'll give this guy another few days, see what happens. And I might have to uh, pick all the ripe tomatoes as well and just say goodbye to this heirloom as well. Guys, I feel like this year the tomato season has come and went. The high humidity definitely had an impact on the tomatoes, especially my heirlooms when it comes to different fungal disease. I feel like I had to treat my tomatoes much more this year than I have done in the past because of all this humidity that we've been having here in zone 7a this summer. We're right here behind my heirloom tomato plant playing a little peekaboo game with me is yet another one of my Japanese eggplants and I just wanted to show you guys again how huge these eggplants are. Look at this monster over here. Look at this guy. In fact, I think it is time to pick this guy over here. So let me take a look. Let me show you. Look at this. Look at this. Here you go, guys. I actually had to go back and get my pruning shears because this beauty just didn't want to budge. But take a look. Look at this nice, beautiful color. And look how long this is. This is at least a foot and a half in length. And every one of these guys that I pick is getting larger and larger. And there are still new Japanese eggplants forming daily on this bush. So this guy is doing excellent still in the month of September as well. Moving on over here in this bed, I do have my tomatillos growing. And you could feel the tomato, the tomatillo inside. However, they're not fully ready yet. So I'm leaving this guy alone. But look at all the blooms still on the tomatillos. Look at this. And look at all the tomatillos forming. Look at all these new tomatillos forming. So the tomatillos are still going at it. These plants are just so tall. It's much taller than mean sizing. I have some heirlooms in here. But again, guys, I must say the peak of the season is definitely over. I have some Roma tomatoes over here that I'm just leaving alone. Some are ripe, some are not, but you can see, guys, you could see the condition of these tomato plants. You can see all the fungal disease and the brown leaves that they had to endure because of all this heat and all this humidity. Look at this tomatillo. This one's actually full. You could feel it. There's no more empty space. It feels like a little ball. So I guess some of the tomatillos I can actually harvest. So is this one nice and firm. But yeah, guys, the peak of the season, I must say, is definitely, definitely behind us at this point. Moving on, guys. These are my cucumbers. You could see, guys, you could see that this guy over here is also starting to say goodbye to me. I've had this whole 
raised bed filled, filled with cucumbers, which I was harvesting daily. There are still some little cucumbers left growing. Very, very few flowers left. You could see the happy pollinators over there working busy, busy bees. However, majority of the plant, as you could see, is starting to die off. You could see all the spacing over here. You could see the leaves are starting to die out. So the cucumbers are pretty much done for this growing season. I'm going to give them again another few days, maybe up to a week. And then I'm going to pull these guys out, re-amend the soil with some compost, and plant some vegetable, vegetables and herbs for my fall garden in this bed as well. Right over here next to my cucumber bed, I have my squash raised bed. So look at these big, very heavy guy. I just picked a, a yellow squash yesterday. Very similar size that we're going to cook today actually. But I wanted to show you, there are still little baby squash growing on it. Over there, there are still new blooms. Right next to it, I have my butternut squash. You could see that I'm using supports. By the way, I got these on Amazon. They're made out of real metal, not flimsy plastic. They're height adjustable. And I, I use them in my home garden to support squash, melons, anything that's basically requires to be elevated above the ground so they don't touch wet soil, you know, grass, basically so they don't start to get eaten by insects or to rot from the moisture. So these are great. I'm going to link them in the comment section below. So in case some of you might be wondering, I just took an extra one from my garage and I wanted to show you these supports. You could see they're made out of metal. It's actually very sturdy metal uh, compared to some other, you know, plastic flimsy supports that I've been seeing online. So these guys come in a pack of six. You could see that they're height adjustable. They're, they can be easily placed into grass, into soil, and you can easily control the height, adjust the height. And these are amazing for melons, watermelons, um, butternut squash, summer squash, acorns, gourds, pumpkins even, you name it guys. So again, in case some of you are wondering, and no, I have no affiliation with this company. I'm not marketing them. I just tried various kinds of support. Many of them were plastic, hence ended up snapping, uh, breaking, you name it. But you know what? These are very uh, strong. They're weather resistant. And I feel like, uh, you know, I definitely got a winner over here with these. So after I ordered the first set, I ended up going back on Amazon and actually ordering a second set. And let me show you exactly why I needed the second set. We're right here next to my butternut squash. I have my yellow crook neck squash. Take a look at this beauty over here. Isn't this just pretty? By the way, I'm going to elevate this guy right now as well. I didn't even realize that it's touching the gravel. I don't want it to rot. So I'm going to elevate this guy as well, followed by this monster. Just take a look, guys. And this is, this is just, it's taking over my entire grass area over here in my backyard, pretty much all the way to the pool. And I kid you not, look at all these big, huge, healthy leaves. And let me show you exactly what is growing on the stunner? Take a look. Some are smaller, but you could see the supports as well. Look at these. Some are larger. Some are turning color. Look at this beauty. But you could see how well these supports are actually doing. Look at this. But this plant is so happy. Look at all the new flowers, flower buds. This just, this guy is a monster. Take a look. You know, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to trellis these upright for the next growing season because this is just 
insanity. Look, I had to turn this guy around into this direction because I kid you not, another day or two, this vine would have ended up inside my pool, guys. This is how huge this one is. Stunning, look at this. So my summer squash, my butternut squash, my yellow crooknecks and the gourds are definitely, definitely still going strong. Right next to my summer squash bed, I have a bed filled with um, eggplants. So this is the Black Beauty variety. You could see that I still have some eggplants on it. However, I'm letting these get to a more mature sizing, but there are no new blooms left on these guys. Over here is my strawberry container and the kids still get to pick sweet strawberries almost on an everyday basis. You can see how nice and green the foliage is. Look at all these berries. There are still blooms, new blooms on the strawberries as well. But the kids are absolutely loving coming out here in the backyard and picking all these sweet, delicious strawberries. Take a look, guys. And before our September 2023 vegetable garden tour comes to an end, I just wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse of my gorgeous, stunning, huge dahlia blooms over here in my south side garden. Here are some more of my dahlias. Look at these big, beautiful blooms they're loving loving the sun over here i also have a border against the fence of raspberries growing take a look at this some have not uh, set any fruits but some are just going nuts look at these look at these stunning fresh raspberries for my kids to pick last but definitely not least i just wanted to give you guys a glimpse of my beautiful melons over here. I have one big guy over here that I will support right now. Actually, I'm gonna use the same metal support. Take a look over here, guys. More melons growing. Look at this, guys. Another stunning melon. And look at all these beautiful sun ripened raspberries what a gorgeous gorgeous plant i have some cabbage growing on this side i will be planting more for my fall vegetable garden the sun is back out and shining guys i want to thank each and every single one of you who took the time out of their busy schedules today to join me on my September 2023 vegetable garden tour. If you guys enjoy the content of this video, show me that support by clicking thumbs up below. Leave your comment in the comment section below as well. Talk to me guys, talk to me my fellow gardeners, my loyal subscribers. Let me know what does your home garden look like now in the month of September 2023. Have you guys started your fall vegetable garden yet if you haven't yet done so guys don't wait any longer do so right now go below this video click the subscribe button it's super easy for you to do you're so pleasing and rewarding to me knowing that you guys enjoy watching my videos that you find the content of my videos to be useful informative helpful and if you never want to miss any of my new upcoming garden videos, click the bell icon as well. YouTube will notify you every time I'll upload a new gardening video. Who came to join me? My little helper, Julia. Julie, say hi, mama. Hi. She came out here to my backyard to help me on this garden tour. She's being a little shy today. It's okay, Julie. Stay healthy, happy, be well, guys, each and every single 
one of you. And as I always say, happy gardening. And I'll see you again in my new upcoming gardening videos. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend.